I'll be with them winners. Cross the finish line, grab the bag, show my rings off. I got the hood with me, everybody love the winner. Yeah, we about that business. Yeah, we about that winner. Hi, I'm Rick Watson, and you are here watching Winners Are Made, The Blueprint, the talk show slash podcast that will help you evade and perform to be a winner. Hi, everyone. We're here today with my new talk show called Winners Are Made, The Blueprint. We're here to tell you everything within this industry that is part of everyone's success. So you'll be seeing a lot of guests here, celebrity guests. Uh, community guests, every walks of life here to make sure that everybody's point of view get told and to encourage you to want to grow with your thing. But today I got a very special guest. Um, I call her special because she has like 16 titles. So, and her name is Ashella Reen and her brand is Be a Lady and a Legend. Right. When I seen that, I was like, you know, this is have to be somebody that got to be on it because woman empowerment is real. So, First, we're going to get started by going back and forth with questions to give our different artists, you know, questions and people. And by Shellarine being the first person to be interviewed on the show, she has to represent for all the women. I so got y'all. She got us? I got y'all. Got y'all. No worries, I got y'all. If she mess up, <laughs> no, I got y'all. The woman. <laughs> no, we're excited to have her here. And we want to give a shout out to some of our sponsors which is Urban Body Works. Um, and we have some other sponsors that are coming on board. If you're interested in being a sponsor for our show, let us know, or interested in getting a 30 cent second commercial done for our show. Um, we are also brought to you by Real Wine, our new video company. And we're here to make sure that you get the best of the news. Because a lot of news is up here is only about gossip. We want to give you some news the other side and make sure that we represent the positive, constructive things that are going on in our communities. So, without further ado, I want to introduce our guest for the day. Well, thank you for having me. I'm honored. Mr. Shellerine. And Mr. Shellerine, tell them, because I know you have a lot of titles and you work really hard, so let them know some of the titles that you are and what you do. So I am a reverend, I'm a military chaplain, I'm a hospice chaplain, I'm a doctor, I'm a mother, I'm a grandmother, I'm an author, I'm a publisher, I'm also a producer, and I am a, I like to have fun, so I'm just a fun person, I'm an engaging person, and more than all of that, I am a child of the king, I am a lover of the Lord, and the Lord loves me. Wow. I told you about 16, didn't I? So, Michelle Marie, you've been around for a while and been doing a lot. Um, and I noticed one of the reasons that I do and like you and enjoy you and uh, being around your company and understanding your essence is because you always uh, do very encouraging things um, for people. And I, I noticed that a lot of encouraging things you do for women in general. And I think you're moving to encouraging everybody as a whole. Um, Tell us a little bit about a couple of one of your books um, that was your first book and what that represented. What was it? Oh, wow. My very first book I wrote in 2011. It was called Does Love Cover That? The Healing Process of the Fruit of the Spirit. And I wrote that book in response to a bad love experience that I had. I was coming out of a, a um, dysfunctional relationship. And uh, it wasn't a situation ship as you would think. It was a real relationship. And I was questioning whether or not love was really for me. You know, sometimes you can be hurt so much that you begin to question whether or not loving somebody and being loved by somebody else is worth your time. So I wrote that book in response to that, saying that we only allow people to love us the way that we love. And so if I don't know how to let somebody love me, then I'm just going to keep attracting people who will love me the wrong way. So that first book was how do you bounce back from a non-loving experience and still see the love of God and love as a whole as being something worthwhile. Wow, very interesting um, about that thing called love. I have a lot of philosophies about love. Yes, you do. Uh, I, yeah, a lot. And I, and I speak it all the time. So in, uh, in understanding about 
uh, love in general, that is so true because I always say that everybody's damaged properties. Absolutely. And I think by everybody being damaged properties, um, when you're going into a situation or another situation, you have to only go into um, sharing your heart and letting go of what happened to you and then only being what you want to. Because I believe being hurt uh, is a big scenario, but I don't want to take away from what your book is explaining to the people. So that's good. So what was your second book? My second book is called Finding Me, A Woman's Theology of Self-Identification. I wrote that book in response to wanting to see a reflection of who I am in the Bible through the lens of a God who loves me just because I'm a woman, not in spite of the fact that I'm a woman, because I'm a woman. So I went through the Bible theologically soundly to say we are in the text. And when you find yourself in the text, that's when you'll be liberated and you'll say God loves me just for who I am. Wow, that's a beautiful uh, process. And I noticed that your, your books uh, seem like they're going on a journey right already. They from one, are. From one step to the next. And, uh, and that particular thing, I think that's very important because in finding yourself and find, trying to win in the world, you have to have a balance of spirituality, I believe, in order to go further and to get things done. Okay, let's go to your third book. My third book is called Beside the Still Waters, Having Faith Even When. I had a son at 39 weeks who died. And so when you have a child, regardless of whether it was a miscarriage, a stillbirth, or after the child has already started breathing, the loss of that is very similar. And so you learn to live with the loss of that loved one. There's some things you'll never get over yet with God, you'll get through. So I'm also a hospice chaplain. So they're always saying, where's God? Why did this happen? And so that part of the book that says, beside the still waters, having faith even when, is to say that even in the midst of pain, even in the midst of grief, even in the midst of not getting what you thought you wanted from God, you can still hold on and you can still have faith. Wow, and that's the name of that book again? Beside the Still Waters, Having Faith Even When. Wow. Um, it's amazing because when people go through so many journeys in life and then you get a chance to express it, I think that's very relevant because I think one of the avenues for people to get better is to express it and to talk through it and to get through things. Absolutely. Because a lot of people just hold on to so much um, in general, and when they hold on to so much, it turns into a turmoil that you can't let out. So I'm very encouraged with you because you look 16 and you wrote all these books. <laughs> well, thank um, you. But I know you're a lot older, but because <laughs> you got too much wisdom. But uh, it's, it's amazing to understand as a transition you're going through. So that brings us to, do you have another book? I do. The it? next book is called The Chick on the Side from the Heart of a Wife. Uh-oh. Now that book I wrote in response to being a wife who became the chick on the side. So the premise of that book is whoever the chick is who gets most of the attention, that's the main chick. And a lot of times the wife becomes the chick on the side when the husband decides to be with somebody else. So that book is, is only room for a man to cheat if there's a woman to cheat with. There's only room for a woman to cheat if there's a man to cheat with. So if we go back to the sisterhood and we hold each other's feet to the fire, then all this cheating stuff would stop. Hey. Jones. And I'm here to tell you about what I believe to be one of the greatest auto body repair shops in the country. Come on, walk with me. Urban Bike Works begins with a customer service department that is dedicated to handling each client with care. Body works when you need it done the right way. Wow, she almost she made me. She she her books are so enticing and and gratifying. I meant to sit my books up here, and I don't have any up here. <laughs> so you get all the sales from this podcast. 
<laughs> no, but uh, that's very relevant and very important. And that's a very good point that you made. Uh, uh, you know, I always tell people for every man that she's is a woman and she's with him. So I always say that everybody is wrong in all doings. Because, of course, the man gets the brunt of everything, um, which is logically okay for women, I guess. <laughs> uh, for me, I've always had a different input on that. Okay. Because we don't do anything that they don't allow, and that doesn't mean that either side is right. But what's very important of it is that you do have to get to a point of learning how to program yourself to not feed the flesh everything that it needs. Because sometimes so true. you have a beautiful thing going, and... Uh, and it can be messed up just by you just not taking advantage of saying, you know, is it worth it to lose or mess this up? So I'm excited about that book, too. This is a lot of books. I dare ask, is there any more books? Yes, there is another book. Uh -oh, really? And after that book, I wrote A Conversation with Myself, Healing the Internal Voice. You think about your experience with love, your non-loving experiences. You think about your grief, your pain. And what is the tape that you're playing really to yourself? What conversation are you having with yourself to manage your emotions around the choices you make in your life? Now, I always say sometimes we are the collateral damage of other people's choices. A lot of times we willingly walk into foolishness and then we have to figure out how do we get out of that which we willingly walked into. So having a conversation with yourself about who is really playing the tape, whose voice are you really listening to, and then how do you get to a point where you then allow God to show you how to control your voice through a spiritual way. Wow, and what's the name of that book again? A Conversation With Myself, Healing the Internal Voice. Uh, it's, it's, that's amazing, and, and, I, and all your books um, I've had the chance to be uh, familiar with, and that's another powerful one because I always tell people that uh, and it's another talk show I want to do, uh, is that your problem is you. That's at true. the end time, sometimes you just have to take a look at yourself. Like everybody can look at everybody and say what everybody else is doing wrong. A woman can look and see what everything she's trying to find is something that's wrong. But at the end of the day, sometimes you should take a look at yourself. That's and just say, right. What do I need to get together about myself? Because right. I think that in any situation or anything in life, different spirits and energy comes from being in a position of what you give off. Because mm -hmm. sometimes it's not necessary always to be. Like I see some people walk around just angry all the time. And that's going to bring this energy in the room to what they're balancing to because energy is very important and what you give off is what you get back. And I'm very big on that. That's right. Okay, Shelby. Now, how many books have we had so far? That was number one, two. I think that was six. That was six. I think that was four. You six. That man. Wow. We named six books already. Yeah, because we does love cover that finding me okay. beside the still waters. That you're gonna side, and then a conversation with myself. Oh no! Now we're gonna talk about number six. Okay. Yeah, that's about it. Okay. So now, what is number six? Number six is spiritual alpha female unleashing nine leadership principles from Proverbs thirty one. So that book is designed because there's a lot of books about leadership. And a lot of times women have to acculturate themselves into a male idea of what leadership is. And oftentimes we wound up, we wind up just adjusting who we are to fit into this role of who people say leadership is. And then on the other side of that, you have the whole alpha female that has been over sexualized. But an alpha female is a woman who takes control of her life. But a spiritual alpha female is a woman who puts God first and allows God to take over her life. Hi, I'm author Rick Watson, and I'm here to tell you about my two new philosophy books. The first one is called The Deprogramming of a Failure Mindset. And the second is called The Conditioning of Black Self-Destructing Behavior. I wrote these books in order to help with social change. So get your copies today on Amazon or at rickwatsonproductions.com. The amazing thing that I think that what, what I'm so inspired by you and one of the reasons I wanted you as a guest on my show is because um, you're a person that have been through, I'm sure, a lot like everybody else, and you just haven't allowed that to succumb to you. Yeah. So this what this show is about. It's called Winners Are Made and The Blueprint. So we're making a way that we encourage people to be able to be back on top and get things done. And that's why um, this woman here, I wanted to be a strong woman to come in for the first show because I think it's relevant because I have daughters and daughters. And I think it's hard enough for 
uh, men of color out in the world alone, but I think it's even harder for women of color. So there, what I love that they're doing is striving to make things right because society has us in a position, us men out here, some of us, that, you know, we feel like there's no hope and there's no future because, um, because of um, the lack of resources that, the, that this government does not give us. And yes, it comes down to resources. Always remember and understand. It comes down to resources. Resources are what now these days. It's not a coincidence we're not in different malls and shopping centers and all those things. It's because of the way that the system is set up, and that's not nothing from a position. Everybody says, oh, of course we can do it, and we can do that, and we did. We did it in 1921. Uh, we had the biggest everything. We did it in Tulsa, Tulsa called Black Wall Street. Look it up if you don't know. And we also did it in uh, uh, Dorm, North Carolina. So the thing I want to say is that uh, you have to understand that we have to break this cycle of not believing in ourselves, not going forward, because we're always in a position where we're being told, OK, I want my children to go and get a good job. I want you to go to school to get a job. I don't tell my children that. I want you to go to school to become a business owner so that way you can make security for you and your family. So we're saying that, Mr. Sheldon, back to you. Um, now, is there any more books before I go? There's another book. Another book? Yes. This one another, the next book I wrote, I was on my way out for deployment uh, with my soldiers. I'm an Army chaplain. I wrote a book. It's called Refreshing Reflections, 365 Moments of Meditation, Military Edition. And so I, I collaborated with a bishop friend of mine, Bishop George Gibson, and we put together a, mo a moment of meditation every day for them to reflect on God, reflect on themselves as we were deployed. Hmm. So you deployed. So you okay? So you're in, that's right. You're in the service and you've been deployed. Wow. Uh, are you a superwoman? <laughs> would you call yourself that? Would I call myself a superwoman? I would call myself a spiritual alpha female. I would say that God has gifted me on many levels, and I use those gifts to be a blessing. Hmm. That's the more. That's I'm glad because every, everybody's into fantasy. That's real, and I appreciate <laughs> that's that. Real. Um, Tell us a little bit about your brand uh, and what, what, what inspired it. Uh, be a lady and a legend. Um, and I know it's going to be a collection of different things. So tell us a little bit about that. I was in Kuwait. Uh, we were over there deployed and I was in Kuwait and I went to the PX and I saw this shirt and it said, don't be a lady, be a legend. And I said, oh no, we got to be a lady and a legend. That goes back to the whole leadership model of when you see a woman in authority, she has a different appearance per se due to the societal construct of what woman is supposed to be she's supposed to be in a certain place and so to say that don't be a lady means that they minimize the femaleness and accentuates what is portrayed to be as the maleness of leadership so for me be a lady in the legend is to be fully standing as a woman created in the image and likeness of god but still have the power and the direction and the determination to do anything i want to do that's amazing and so true. And that's why I always tell people when it comes to success, um, success is just a state of mind that motivates progress because you have to put yourself in a position of understanding who you are. And in understanding who you are, you can accomplish anything you want and stop looking at the bag. The bag is not the ultimate thing. Um, to getting, the Bible even says much is given, much is required, so it's about people. So you should always think about what your, what your business or what you're trying to accomplish, what it can do for others and stop being so entrapped into the bag, the money, you know, and doing it. So it's, it's important to move forward. So, Shellerine, um, uh, so let's let people know, um, you know, where you were born and where you're from. So we kind of- Oh my. Up. So I, I was born in East Stars, New Jersey to, uh, to uh, Willie and Debbie Anthony. And so they met when they were nine, had a little mock wedding when they were 12, started dating at 16, got married at 18, and this year will be 53 years of marriage. So I come from watching love blossom and watching stick to itness is what I call it, through the ebb and flow of marriage, through the trials and tribulations, they have managed to stay together. So that is my background. My parents never gave us church. What they did give us is God. So I've never not known who God is. So I remember learning to pray at two, and from the time that I was conscious enough to know who God is, I always believed that God was present, always believed that God heard me, and I never questioned whether or not God was in my life and blessing me and keeping me. 
So I have siblings, I have an older brother, an older sister, and a younger sister, so I am smack dab in the middle. So I am the typical middle, middle child, I am the mediator, I am all of those things. And I used to run track, and I wanted to be a ballerina, and I wanted to be a doctor, and I just wanted to get out and fly. And so I went through school, and you know, you have the trauma of childhood, and all those different kind of things, and I decided I was going to go off and become a doctor, and I was going to be a clinical psychologist. And I wanted to help people figure out how they think the way they do. And I was about a week out from getting my um, access to school and the door closed. And God said, nope, go to seminary. And I said, I don't wanna go to seminary because I wanna teach, not preach. And so I wanted to combine my associate of art degree and my uh, Christian degree, and I wanted to go on and do some of that kind of stuff. And the Lord said, oh, no, you're going to preach the gospel, and you're going to do it my way. So I went to Lutheran Theological Seminary, um, graduated in 05. Then I went on to become a hospital chaplain, and then I did some pastoring, and then I got into hospice. And when I was in, uh, actually, military worked out really well. When I was in seminary, they came to the school, and they were like, we want you to be an Army chaplain. I said, well, can you guarantee that I would have to be in Hawaii. That is my dream job. I'm still working on it. I want to be a chaplain in Hawaii. And they said, nope. So I said, no, I can't get in because my kids were little. And 10 years later, the Lord opened the door for me to get into the military. So I've been in the military for six years and loving every second of it. Had the opportunity to deploy with my soldiers. And that was an amazing time in ministry over in the Middle East. And I always say, be careful what you ask God for because you just might get it. Yeah, in most cases you will, and then it's his time, <laughs> and in his time. Um, you know, one of the things that, you have an amazing story, wow, um, to know that you've uh, accomplished so much, and you have a bit of, what, five feet tall? I am 4'11 and three-fourths of a quarter. So she's not even five. And this little not woman even here five feet. has worked so hard, and <laughs> it amazes me every time I hear most of her story. So that's why, I like, this show is called Winners Are Made, because I want people to understand that you have to lock yourself into winning. You can't put yourself in a position where that you have you have to second guess yourself. Because I understand this even from a spiritual standpoint that you were born to win. God has made us all in a position to be able to survive. We have to stop letting society, society give an image of what we're not supposed to be, what we what we can't be, and always focus and start focusing on what we are made to be. That's it's right. very important in life to move forward and to make things happen. So, um, on that note, I do want to um, thank Dr. Dr. Slash, Reverend Slash, Colonel Slash, Major Slash, uh, Rep. Look, Michelle Marie. I'm very proud of you and all you've been doing. Oh, thank you. Um, and I wanted to, I just want to get your perspective. One more thing, one of the questions, the main questions I always ask at the end of this. Um, just so you can give your people a chance. Because okay. in order for you to dig in and go forward to do what you did, uh, people ask me all the time, you know, what you do exactly? And I always say to people, exactly what I did might not be the exact thing for her or for you, but I can tell you what I did as far as first focus and dedication. So I want this show to be a part of uh, people always telling um, what they what they did to kind of follow. So maybe that person out there may find, find through these, uh, you know, these episodes that I have in this show is something that may fit best for them. So in, in that, I would like to ask you, what is it? that you you did to accomplish what you're doing to become a, the winner you are wow so first um it's rooted and grounded in faith so my faith that not only does god love me the faith that god has given me what i need to be who god called me to be so that is first you got to have a firm foundation second you got to have some stick to itness because life is going to come at you in so many different ways i went to school for 10 years at night while my kids were little that's how i have five degrees I mean, I didn't, I didn't have anybody paying for that for me. I decided, I made a decision that this is what I wanted. So you gotta have some stick to itness to what it is that you believe you're called to do. And then you can't be so easily persuaded when life comes, you gotta be like a tree. You can bend, but you can't break. So once you have a firm foundation, you got some stick to itness, now you gotta have some drive and some determination. You have to be the driver of your life. And you can't allow other people to drive your life because they don't know where they're going. I had somebody say to me one time, 
I was telling them that God had called me into the military and they were saying, well, I don't think God said that. I said, probably not because God wasn't talking to you. God was talking to me. And so you have to know, for, you got to know who you are and whose you are. You got to choose to be the person to say everything I need to succeed, God has given me. I just need to tap into that which God has already given me. And then surround yourself with people who drive you to greatness. Stop hanging around people who ain't going nowhere. They telling you how to have a business and they can't even make a sandwich. That just doesn't make any sense. So you got to get around people who are, who are going where you are. So I have different circles. I have a circle for my personal life, a circle for my business life, a circle for my military life. And when I am the smartest person in the circle, that means it's time to get a new circle. Everybody in my circle should push me to greater. Now, I can be a part of somebody else's circle, and I will mentor them, but that is not my circle that pushes me to greatness. That's a very good point, because it is definitely about being around people um, to encourage them. That's why I wanted to be in a position to actually uh, get things done, and because a lot of circles I was being around wasn't there. So, in closing... Uh, I want this, Dr. Smolarine to give you how they can contact you or see about your books when we did. Absolutely. So I am Ashellarine Lang on Facebook. I am Dr. Ashellarine on Instagram. I am at Rev Shella on Twitter. My uh, website is www.empoweredtobegreat.com or you could just type in Ashellarine, which is A S H E L L A R I E N. And you can Google me, and all of my books will come up. All of my podcasts will come up. I am on a TV show that is uh, called The Three Wise Ones. So I am the only female voice, so you will see me all over. So type in my name. All of my stuff will come up. And thank you, Mr. Rick Watson, for this amazing opportunity. Yeah, and thank you as well for representing f for God and for the communities and all the women around the world that stand focused. So in saying that, we want... I like my guests to say this with me at the same time. We're going to say, when is it made the blueprint? All so right. thank you all very much. And as my show is called, give it to me. When is it made, made the blueprint? God bless. I'll be with the winners here. Cross the finish line. Grab the bag. Show my rings off. I got the love with me. Everybody love the winner. Yeah, we about the business. Yeah, we about that winner.